Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to 11th hour. Let's continue. So we're supposed to click on this. How we were supposed to figure out this was the thing we were supposed to click on is not realistic. Apparently that's going to open another video. And we'll hope that this one's a little bit louder. We just get more and more footage. <laughs> All of these Actually, female characters the seem to hate each other. I'd like, to interview him. like, we're into the next act, so we're just getting small clips. I guess I'm happy for that. But then you have to kind of... So, yeah, once we get all the small clips, then we'll probably end up watching a longer clip that's the combination of all those cut out, cut up small clips. And the clips don't feel like they're incredibly out of order. It doesn't feel like there's a scene that we've seen that will turn out to be like the last few seconds of some character's life or anything like that. Although that might be the case. Um, there's a lot of feeling here that these would cause jump scares. Like ev everything we look at um, might. That it, it's a little bit spooky might cause jump scares. I have a hard time believing that. Like, But it, it's hard to remember, frankly. Uh, there definitely were a lot of really really simpleton people for lack of a better word and that is certainly an insulting way to put it but uh, See, the problem is the, aud the music is always louder than the dialogue they didn't bounce it at all uh, see if there's any new other areas on the map. Seems like maybe I could go into other people's rooms, other rooms, and feels like a lot of these are just mentioning people that may have been in the first game, unless this is a collection of other people that died. Let's go through this door and see what we see. So we're looking for somebody named Sounder and Libation as our hint. Well, we've got a puzzle here, so let's see what we do. One, two, hmm. What is the proper way to wreck the nine ball? Play it again, Carl. Hmm. I guess if you were racking up a nine ball and this was the front, which you kind of assume that would be, you do one, two, three, and then probably you do four over there, but it will put it over here. Five, six, seven, eight. Ooh. Close, but no cigar. Hmm, the nine ball's in the middle, so isn't it? Yeah. Four. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing now. Behind the eight ball and don't even know it. Hmm. Keep trying, Carl. You're getting closer. I have no idea what I'm even supposed to be doing, so how can I be getting closer? Place all of the nine white balls with the numbered balls in sequential order. Okay. You want to help me a little bit more with that? Five, six, seven, eight. That's not it. Hmm. One... Won't work over there. One, 
two, three, four, five. Seems like it's always skipping one. Hmm. No cigar. One, two. Play it again, Carl. Well, it could be the number of balls you're touching because that wouldn't make much sense. Boy, do these puzzles just suck. They really, really suck. They wouldn't be terrible if it told you what to do. And, but by giving you only one sentence as a hint if you ask for it, you just can't have a freaking clue. And it's, it's frustrating at this point. Like, I don't want to have to just go to the walkthrough and look up the solution. I'm not that dumb. I could solve this puzzle if you would just make yourself clear as to what the puzzle was. This is almost like one of those jigsaw traps where uh, you wake up after being drugged and you have five seconds to realize what's the situation you're in and then make the exact perfect choice and do the exact perfect thing in those next ten seconds. Otherwise, the trap is already sprung and even though you may have... 10 to 20 more minutes of slowly suffering and dying there was no way for you to solve that and spoiler for the first movie that's literally what happens there is a person who wakes up they're handcuffed they wake up after being drugged in a tub that is full of water they kick around uh, because their face and head fell under the water and they kick the uh, bathtub plug Floating in the water was a key that would have unlocked the handcuffs. He had literally no chance of surviving. Well, maybe one chance of surviving. Uh, or maybe even a couple. But n no real chance of solving that puzzle uh, as it was. Uh, at all. And that's how most of the jigsaw puzzles work. Is that they're inherently unfair because they don't take into consideration that human beings are not supercomputers that will immediately be able to access their situation and know what to do uh, and it's so ridiculous particularly and I'm getting into a rant about the Saw movies which I kind of like them but they're, they're dumb the, the games as they're set up the traps as they're set up are really dumb uh, but yeah it's really ridiculous then he often Jigsaw, the killer in the movies, will often record these tapes telling you what to do, but the tapes often don't really tell you what to do in time. Okay. So. Apparently the solution after that rant is this. Why would this be the solution? Let's just stop here. It's the, the other is five, six, seven, eight, nine. Why would the solution be one, then two, then three? Then it jumps to four. Four does not add up to the number of uh, the number of the other two balls. That would be three. Four doesn't add up if you add all three either. Four is the number of white balls touching it at this point, but one wouldn't be the number of balls that this would have been touching, nor would have two been the number of white balls that this would have been touching, nor three would have been the number of white balls touching there. So these things are just like broken. Like, there, there is no logic here. Not that I can see. Uh, maybe there's something really stupid and really obvious here. This is not how you would rack a nine ball game. The nine ball would be in the middle. Curse you. Hmm. So. 
Yeah. I don't know how you have entertainment there. I don't know how you have any entertainment. When, when that's the games they want to show you. This looks like that might have been, might be a puzzle at some point. But I'm not even really, really willing to, to give it a chance. So here's a dog that's next to drinking, so I guess that was the hint. Is this the dog? Hmm. <laughs> so I clicked on all three, and what does it say? It says, turn around and look at the painting. Click on the setter dog on the right. The next riddle is encrypted. So, so apparently, am I driving you to drink? I mean, we, we haven't done it. So apparently I clicked maybe over here, needed to click more over here. Leave it alone. I say hmm. hmm. I see three dogs. I am not so much an expert that I can say this is a setter. I could guess that it is a setter fairly easily. You're a tad slow there, yeah. Carl. Come on, Carl, that clock is ticking. Hmm. So I don't know how you don't just assume that the game is glitched. Unless there's a picture of a dog over here. No, this is Medusa. Now we have a lamp that maybe we can do something with. No. We have an eyeball. As an old insult. just a ton of things to click on on top of the game just being unfair feels like all these puzzles if you didn't if if their focus was to just add puzzles it really should have been more of a case of adding more puzzles to the first game and re-releasing the first game and just saying hey we now have a second version of this game in episode 2 of of the seventh guest without telling a new story I don't know if that would really sell like uh, but it, it would make more sense considering we're walking around the same house if they're not going to remake the house or change the house more than just kind of destroy it turn around then click on the center dog on the right well, if this isn't the dog on the right, and this is fairly obviously a pug, maybe this is it. It's hard to tell you apart from hmm. zombies who are going so slow. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if maybe you're supposed to... Maybe I'm supposed to click on the head? Cheer up, Carl. You'll find it in the last place you look. There must be a better way to find things. Ouija board. Let's see. Fortune cookies. What is our hint? Libation and affection. For a puppy called Sounder. Head out to the galley and upstairs. Uh, and into the same bedroom. Ah, ah, ah. I see why this isn't working. 
So I'm clicking on a solution, but because I did things out of order a little bit, I'm clicking on the wrong solution. Libations for Sounder is having us go back this way. And click on, I guess, this champagne bottle again. Animal sound sweet. Hmm. So now we have a new hint. Really does just go to show, though, that you're. Uh, you're not going to be able to beat this game at all. Like, forget a reasonable amount of time. You would just not be able to beat the game at all with the linearity of these puzzles and having to solve these puzzles before you get anywhere further. So. They, they seem to just love to put hints that are similar right next to each other so now you click on this and it gives you a video So here you have horrible prop things. I've seen a decent number of terrible direct-to-VHS movies. This is still kind of bad even by that scale. That prop's not terrible, but... It's not great by any means. So next we have an... You have an encoded thing. So apparently... You're supposed to... Leave the room, go in the round to the grandfather clock. Click on the face of the clock, the next riddle is again encrypted. Interesting. How in the world would you get grandfather clock from any of this? Though. This is just pure insanity. It's... It's... Complete lack of logic. Like, that, that puzzle only there to ensure that people can't beat the game and would have to call some kind of 900 number for hints. I'm glad Cyan, the creators of Myst, never really seemed to be big into that. Yeah. As cryptic and weird as the Myst games are, there's logic somewhat to it. Uh, it's not just insanity and impossible uh, puzzles. So, click on the face of the clock. Something happened to Samantha. Hmm. Something's got her. Who's Samantha? Can you help her? I, I don't know. I have to get out of here. I'm scared. So she's like a ghost. Wait. And he seems to completely not not recognize that. So he's just like straight up um uh, straight up just saw a ghost. And now all of a sudden we've got a new hint.
Hmm. So, if you were to think that Z is G and U is O, you could get Go. Um, and then you could try to do a substitution cipher um, for all of this, but boy would that really suck. And it's not Z is G and G is Z. Probably says something like go upstairs to the something something something. Whatever it says, it's it's not reasonable without some assistance to solve that puzzle. Unless that was going to be just like a consistent part of the game and they were going to give you a notebook or some special decoding tool. It's kind of ridiculous that we do have a decoding tool and uh, we do have this electronic tool and there is no just like decoding that could be done here using that seems like that would be fairly easy to try so where am I we're in a room with a confederate flag I went into the wrong room I wanted to go into the bathroom. So we'll go back to that room later. I'm just kind of followed exactly the way the walkthrough goat says to. There's just no point to it. So it says, you would turn right, look at the train hole spider things. Uh, And after we had solved the drain hole spider puzzle, which we'd already done, we click here. And that unlocks the next bit of video. And I really do want to just like rush through that. That is like very sloppy, awkward kissing. And interesting, it seems almost as if the items we're clicking on might play some role. I don't know why the game on stove. is catching my attention when it has been more than willing to not have the notification go off for many of the other puzzles. So. I'm gonna dare risk it to assume that uh, you're supposed to go down to the kitchen. Let's look at the map and see if that is the case. Like, kitchen doesn't seem like it can be accessed. But, so let me just double check. Nope. It says the dining room is where we're going. Kinda wish you could just quick move. But that would really ruin what they're trying to do here, which is to waste people's time. This is kind of like a prime example of a game that sort of deserves to be ruined, if any game ever deserves to be ruined. Um, there's a fruit bowl uh, by things like YouTube and Let's Plays. Like the the gameplay itself is not adding anything. Going in circles, Mister. Hmm. Apparently, we're supposed to click on the orange, not the banana. I don't know. Like what? The hint here is fruit loop, fruit loop on the stove. And we had a gross, like, worm-like creature we saw. Dreams abound of arming the rebels. What of nocturnal forces <laughs> scheduled? 
that's a poem around nightmares, I would guess. Hmm. And they're certainly making us wander around a lot of places. And I guess if you are going to try and play this the right way, you need to kind of take a loop and look through every room. I feel like, particularly when you entered the dining room in the first game, it spun you around the rooms in a nice little animation. You probably don't need that every time, but it wouldn't have hurt to have that happen at the first time you entered an area, just to give you a forced understanding of the area. It says, turn left and go forward once, so. Then it says, go through the door on the right. So there's this room, but yeah, I, I cannot for a second say you're, you're going to have a better experience playing the game instead of just seeing someone else follow a walkthrough. Uh, even, even just trying to play the game yourself using a walkthrough is really not even a good experience. Like, you, I pretty much have to wave off any of the interactive parts as being entertaining they just aren't so now we're halfway sideways and i guess we're gonna do a puzzle we can see kind of like a moon shape and a mountain shape i guess okay and the thing Nocturnal her Horses Schedules. Talking about night and dreams. And I guess we're supposed to just do a slide puzzle here. Which that seems somewhat doable. Hmm. Let's see. I think pretty much everything is fine. If we can convince the images to sort of line up. Hmm. It seems like this is a little bit more difficult than it probably should be. Because you only got to see that starting position for a brief moment. And without a bit of a refresher, it seems like it would be fairly easy to, to make a mistake there. <laughs> is this in the right place? I think it is. Is that in the right place? I don't think it is. Is that in the right place? So I need then to move some things around. Hmm. And I'm hoping this means we know what we're doing. Hmm. 
Hmm. I hope I know what I'm doing. That's the, the best I can say here, is that I hope I know what I'm doing, and seems like I may very well not know what I'm doing. Hmm. <laughs> and I do believe this is probably one of those puzzles that doesn't have a solution that is just straightforward going to be told to you. Let me, let me just double check. Walk through. It says, this is a simple sliding puzzle where you must recreate the original mirror appearance. After you've done, click the puzzle above the fireplace to solve the riddle. And I, I don't know if... May, I, there's just not a lot of sliding puzzles you do in video games in, anymore. So I don't know if, if I'm being particularly dumb or if there's perhaps a little bit more to this than than what it meets the eye hmm. i think these are right over on this side but i guess it might be that they aren't And that might be part of the problem. Yeah. On the second look, it kind of doesn't look like it. they are right. Hmm. Hmm. See, the, the problem is that apparently the there's a spotlight on this. Are you trying to think or have a movie? So yeah, there's a there's like a spotlight on this image. And so every time you slide a puzzle piece, it makes it kind of seem like it is in the right place because of this circular moon like image but the parts you have to pay attention to are this giant blob here this thin strip here and this kind of mountain here with there being a taller mountain down on this side and a shorter mountain over here kind of nothing in this corner and just a small cloud here okay so that definitely goes to show why why I was having trouble like there was no way I was gonna figure that out looking at the things that I was looking at yeah I don't know we have that in the right place. I think the answer is probably no. Hmm. Let's see.
we've kind of got it but I think this piece might be kind of in the wrong place so how are we gonna do that do we try to circle everything back in this direction circle everything kind of back in this direction circle everything back in that direction I don't know if this is really gonna work hmm. Yeah, I still don't really, really know how to cycle things this way. Hmm. And this might be the wrong one. And see that might be the part of this that's not working hmm. yeah I think this might be in the wrong position we're gonna go a little later here there was yeah, kind of nothing over here in the corner, so I'm wondering if perhaps that's what, what I, was going wrong, is that I need this piece to get in the spotlight, makes it seem like it totally is in the right place. Yeah, I'm wondering if that piece is supposed to be there. And if that piece is supposed to be up there. And then these two pieces are clearly still out of order. Here, here, here. That, 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 and that. I think I have the entire top row correct. And then it just becomes a matter of figuring out whether I want this piece over on this side or this piece over on that side hmm. Hmm. I think it's this piece that's missing Maybe. Hmm. No, maybe not. This, 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 this. You got lucky that time. Yeah, even as a slide puzzle that was awful like so let's see where are we as far as recordings go you can skip back apparently but not as far as you'd like to seems like we've lost the ability to see any of the previous recordings so i don't know at what point in the game would you actually be able to see all the 
the recordings. Um, because right now it's just now in this next act. And then saving, we've been saving kind of like crazy. And I think what we'll do is we'll stop at zero and then reset back to two. We'll keep one always. That way we can always know that we are trying, Carl. You're getting closer. That, that we have that first save file. Not that I'd ever want to play this game a second time. That like there's really nothing here at all that makes you want to play makes me want to play this. Seems like we'll probably go in here and in here and in here and probably in here and have to solve puzzles and click on things. We very possibly are going to go in here and in here and solve puzzles and click on things also. And then in here and in here and in here and solve puzzles and click on things. Although we've already been in the chapel and we didn't click on things, which is a little interesting. Um, there is also... In the first game, there was a very complicated maze that that was kind of sucky that these stairs went down to. From the looks of it, it doesn't seem like we're going that direction at all. Just doesn't seem like we're going to do that. And clearly, we still need to click on something now that we've solved the puzzle. Well, we're going long. Let me just take a moment here. It's to the point where we need to determine whether or not it's reasonable to rush through this in 40 hour segments. Yeah, it doesn't seem like we have too much more to do, actually, because from the looks of it, there's one more puzzle to end this act which is called the eighth hour first one was called the seventh hour the next act is called the ninth hour and surprisingly the next act after that is the tenth hour and then after that there is a very short eleventh hour with a choice of endings which will which is probably pretty obvious if you think about what the two choices could possibly be and boy do I keep running into old games that don't remain relevant or worthwhile of playing I guess in in a weird way it's kind of nice that I didn't play a game like this when it first came out this would have been incredibly frustrating if I had saved up all my chore money and paid 10 or 20 dollars which honestly could have been the equivalent of 30 to 60 dollars back then for a game like this and then found it just extremely extremely unentertaining uh, that being said when I had PCs back in the day they were weak and they didn't really have many games and any of the games I did try to play on PCs were almost all shareware games like PC gaming was just not in a good situation in the early 90s in fact I would say before 2004 2005 PC gaming was pretty unviable for most people it was just cheaper to buy a console you get a better experience there wasn't a lot of uh, support for controller gameplay or support for mouse and keyboard gameplay in games that were designed not to be played with a mouse and keyboard. Um, even now, there's still plenty of games that only have partial controller support. And, and really, Microsoft has done a lot of good for the PC gaming world by allowing the Xbox 360 controller to plug into PCs and just work. Uh, whereas the PlayStation controllers tend to be a little bit more difficult to install drivers for and using the Microsoft infrastructure of DirectX games can 
fairly easily integrate joystick controllers, gamepad controllers into their game and they can fairly easily develop a game to run on PC and an Xbox, whether that was the Xbox One or the um, Xbox 360 or the original Xbox or whatever Xbox you're talking about. The, the original Xbox was called the Direct Xbox uh, internally because of the DirectX middleware software that most games were being developed uh, that would be play on that console and DirectX had long been a thing and it over the years finally improved a game like this definitely probably wasn't using DirectX it was using a lot of other middleware software and assistive software that different companies had different licenses for and it was just just a mess really a mess to develop games uh, for PC or develop games in general uh, but yeah that, that's kind of going in a rant yeah I, I'm in a very bad position where I'm glad I didn't play this game when I was a kid unfortunately I keep trying to play old games and see what they're about that they, they this game still weirdly has relevancy because of the cult following of the seventh guest uh, this game is definitely making 7th Guest, even in this poorly ported version of what I played, um, seem like a better game. And clearly the fan-made game that's coming out, or should be out now, or should be out pretty soon, the 13th Doll, seems to, to show that there was at least enough of a cult following here. Um, although... It's not like there's going to be other games that are like this. If you want to make a puzzle game or an escape the room game or a monster game, there's way easier ways to do it, way cheaper ways to do it, and and you certainly wouldn't use full motion video. There's been very, very few full motion video games that have come out in the past five years, and several of them have been rather short and more along the lines of a telltale game where you just pick a dialogue choice that barely even affects the outcome not games that where the characters themselves are supposed to be uh animated as full motion video and honestly even if somebody had a red camera and they were filming at like 8k 16k whatever you possibly could film at and actually put in a game i still don't think that footage would stand up to the test of time anywhere as good as even something like the original Tomb Raider series uh, even the original Tomb Raider Laura Croft very low polygon count in her but it would be fairly cap it's fairly possible to just change that model around and improve the number of polygons and that's exactly what they did in Tomb Raider Anniversary Edition and then they just kept improving the graphics for the reboot series um, but full motion video you can't really touch that up much except for perhaps the newest technology which is to throw footage at an artificial intelligence and see if the AI can create something from nothing effectively to make the footage look better and even that hasn't been amazingly good they, they it's gotten cheap enough and good enough that they could like remaster Star Trek The Next Generation in, in the Blu-rays uh, but that's about as far as they were willing to go they were not willing to then go and try and remaster Deep Space Nine or Voyager or Enterprise or uh, well the two newest Star Trek series in comparison probably don't need to be remastered uh, so yeah Full motion video is pretty much a, a dud as an idea. Um, unless you just want to have it as a small accent to your game. Anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below in the description box. And if you want to support me further, there's a link to Patreon. Or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wishlist. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.